Now in the last segment we drew lines that were some random length at random angles all over the screen. It may be helpful to learn, but not very practical when it comes to real drafting. So now let's talk about being precise and accurate and clean in our drafting, which is obviously very important. To be honest, that's probably the number one priority when it comes to drafting in AutoCAD is being precise, accurate, careful, clean, all whatever words you want to apply. Every corner has to be perfect. Every line has to be perfectly straight. That's very, very important because if a line is off by a little bit, it might not look like a big deal, but as that drawing develops and grows, it becomes a bigger and bigger deal because it throws off other things that you may not be aware of. Down the road, a year later, that one inaccurate line could have a domino effect and cost a design company, um, a construction error could occur, you know, ends up costing the design company a lot of money in, in the field, potentially. So you just have to be careful and conscientious. And uh, those are big, important rules when it comes to drafting in AutoCAD. Okay, so first we have our units set right. That's important for inputting dimensions. Again, you can type units and look. Looks good, it's set to architectural. Excellent, or ready to go. Okay, so I'm gonna start my line command and click a first point. Now, first, how do I draw a straight line? Horizontal, vertical? I mean, that's gotta be the fundamental aspect of being accurate, is I want it to go straight to the right, straight up, etc. We're gonna now look at those drawing aids again down at the bottom, the drawing aids. The first one we're gonna use is ortho, ortho. When you turn ortho on and then move your mouse, again, I already started the line command. I could have turned on ortho first, or I could turn it on in the middle of the line command, which is what I happen to do. If you don't wanna go down and click on the ortho icon, you can also press F8 and that will turn ortho on and off the F8 key at the very top of your keyboard. I'll go over some more of those F keys as they're pertinent to the steps that we're learning at the time. So now you can see when you've turned ortho on, again, while you're drawing the line, you can also zoom in, pan, etc., with your mouse wheel. You can see that you're fixed essentially to drawing a line either horizontal or vertical. Now you can go up, down, left, or right, but that's really it. And that's good because now it's easy to make it straight. So you never want to guess and say, that line looks pretty horizontal. That's not a precise method of drafting. Now, what if I want that line to be a specific length? This is extremely common. So you've already started the line command, got your ortho on, and you've clicked a first point. Now guide the mouse in the direction, such as to the right, hypothetically, and you can type in a length that you want. This is why our units were so important. So I can now type, let's say 12 feet. Again, you do not have to click in the command line. It's actually better not to, because if you do, you'll screw up the angle of the ortho that you've already guided the mouse. So again, I start the command, I guide the mouse in the direction I wanna go, but I don't touch the buttons, and then I type in the length that you want, like 12 feet, and hit space or enter. Now it's very normal for that to go way outside of your drawing screen. Now you can zoom again with your mouse wheel in order to find the other end of the line. See there's my other end of the line, and you can see that the line is drawn because my mouse cursor now has attached itself to the second point of the line, the end point. So I could continue drawing if I wanted. Again, I can now go up and type in something else. I can um, you know, get out of the line command if I'm finished by hitting escape. Um, but now I have a line that I know is exactly 12 feet long. Congratulations, it's your first accurate line. So ortho is great for drawing those lines that need to be perfectly horizontal or perfectly vertical. Another option, is to use polar tracking. If you hit polar, you'll notice that it turns off the ortho because it's gonna give you the option for one or the other, but not both. And that's because they do similar things. So I'm gonna draw another line. So L space, 
and click your first point. First, you'll notice that polar tracking does allow you to draw lines that are in between horizontal and vertical. We like that. It's a little more flexible. With ortho, you end up turning it on and off, on and off all day because you need the flexibility of drawing lines that aren't perfectly straight, horizontal and vertical at times. So with polar, you have that option. But how do we use polar then to be accurate? Well, if you guide the mouse towards something that is very close to horizontal, you'll see a dotted extension line that shoots out to infinity from the end of your mouse cursor. What that means is that polar has locked you in on being perfectly straight. As long as that dotted extension line is visible on screen, you know you're straight. So now I let go of the mouse, and then I can type in the length that I want. You don't have to let go of the mouse as long as you're careful not to move the mouse. So I can now type 12 feet again, and enter. Now my, I know my line is perfectly horizontal again. I just used polar to do it instead of ortho. So again, you guide the mouse. You have to make sure you see that dotted extension line. If you don't, then you're not going to be locked in on that angle. And then I can type in a, another length and hit enter and continue drawing lines. The other thing that's nice about polar tracking is that it does give you the option to use other angles. Like you can see on my screen that I'm going at a 45 degree angle. So I could type in something and then know that it's going to be at a 45. So polar is nice because it gives you that option of other angles. So how do we know what angles? I'm going to hit escape to get out of drawing lines and go down to polar tracking at the bottom and right click and hit settings. Right click and settings. And you can see here polar tracking has an increment angle which minus set to 45. So that's what's going to dictate the angles that polar tracking is going to give me. So I like 45. That's probably good for a starter. So I'm going to just hit OK. But that's how you can check that. You could change it to 30 if you wanted, if you're drawing a lot of 30, 60, 90 triangles or something like that. So when you're in the line command, polar tracking is very nice because it will allow you to draw straight lines, horizontal, vertical, I mean, but also allow you to draw lines in between. So you end up being able to leave it on most of the time. So it's a little bit more friendly in that way. One thing you might have noticed while you're drawing the line is that on screen, it will show you um, a distance and angle for wherever your mouse is sitting after you've clicked that first point. Even though it looks tempting, you do not want to trust the length there in order to try to be precise. Like you can see, I have my mouse stopped right now on three feet at zero degrees. I would never trust that to be exactly three feet because it's not precise enough. You would want to input the three feet and then press space or enter to make sure that that line is actually exactly three feet. Now the angle being zero. Now notice for a moment that so to the right is zero because that's the way I'm guiding my mouse. Up 90 left 180. So if you think about 360 degrees in a circle, right? By definition in AutoCAD as the default setup, right is going to be your zero direction, 90s up, 180s left, and 270s down in order to then complete the 360 degree circle. So I have a little reference chart here to show you there. Zero right, 90 up, 180 left, 270 down. This is very important. It's important because as you draw angled lines, you need to kind of understand what angle they're at. So if you want a 45 degree line, but it's going to go up and to the left, then technically that's a 135 degree line, 90 plus 45. The uh, basis for this system is the mathematical idea of a Cartesian coordinate system where you have an x-axis and a y-axis. And you can see how those are indicated on my little diagram. X is your horizontal axis, and Y is your vertical axis. So it borrows that idea from a basic um, math coordinate system. And it uses it in the AutoCAD drawing space that we're working in. 
So what that means is that there's a zero, zero point in the center of your infinite canvas. I know that sounds like a contradiction. How can there be a center in an infinite canvas? But if it starts at zero, zero, and then it goes out to infinity on all sides from that point. So you just have to keep that in mind. X is horizontal axis, Y is vertical axis. Right is going to be positive, up is positive, left is negative, down is negative. And that'll make more sense as you get a little farther into AutoCAD. You'll notice there's an icon on the lower left that kind of reminds you of that X horizontal, Y vertical. That's called the UCS icon. And you'll be using that more when you get into 3D drafting. So there's a few other important points to being an accurate draftsperson. We talked about drawing lines precise lengths and how to make them straight. Another very important aspect is how to make intersections between lines be clean. Let's say I want to continue this line with a vertical line. See, I can start a new line, and then I'm going to click right where that line ends, right? Click and then go vertically. Now, what happens if I zoom in and look at that a little closer? See how those two lines don't really meet? That's because I guessed at the intersection point. Very, very bad habit. In AutoCAD, you never want to guess at something like that because you want to be precise about it. So I'm going to erase this line and let's do it the right way. The right way is another one of your drawing aids, and that's object snaps. At the bottom, you'll see uh, O snap. That's short for object snap. The shortcut for that is F3. If you press F3, we'll turn your O snap on and off anytime you need. So if you turn that on, and now you start a new line, L space, now hover your mouse over the uh, endpoint of that other line that you already have. And you'll notice my endpoint object snap shows up. What that means is I see that small colored box. In my case, it's yellow. In your case, it might be green or blue or something. And then it says endpoint. If you click your mouse while you see the colored box and the word endpoint, then AutoCAD is going to start the new line precisely at the endpoint of the other line. Now we know that intersection is going to be perfect and then I can finish the line however I want. I can type in a length again. I could click a different endpoint on another line. You can see how that connected the two lines together. So now we have two options. You can input lengths for the second point, or you can use your object snaps for the second point. For the first point, you're gonna generally use an object snap of something that's already in your drawing unless it's the very first line that you're drawing. Obviously not then. Okay, so the object snaps idea. Endpoint is pretty obvious. That's where one line ends. Let's look at some other object snaps that are available to you. If you right click on O snap and then press settings, right click on O snap and press settings, you get an idea of what object snaps are available. A midpoint is like a halfway point of a line, center, center of a circle or arc, and intersection is where two lines cross one another. Those are your basic object snaps you'll be using a lot right now. Uh, it's not a good idea to go and check all of these because it's going to just make things harder for you. Um, usually you want to kind of leave them as the default settings. Um, but now you can see this is where you could turn some on or off, and it gives you an idea of what object snaps to look for. So the little pictures are the shapes that you'll see. Like for the midpoint, you'll always see the triangle shape. So if you hit OK and start a line and then you go toward the midpoint of a line, you'll see that that little triangle shows up. So now I started that new line right at the halfway point of the previous line. So again, I know that you're being precise in how you're drafting. So those are the basic tools in order to be an accurate draftsperson.